This is high glue granules and in this video I'm just going to be showing you the simple straightforward way on how to mix up high glue with water and heat to get the perfect viscosity. The viscosity or knowing the viscosity of high glue is the most important thing about using it. Uh, it's more important than just knowing the ratio of glue to water. The second part of this video is the demonstration on what glue looks like when you can't clamp it anymore, when it's gelled up. The viscosity and the gel time are the most important things of high glue and this video will show you how to do it and take all the mystery out of it. So high glue, the mysterious romantic high glue. Uh, there's nothing romantic or mysterious about high glue, it's just glue and basically it's like tight bond that you have to warm up to 140 degrees and clamp a bit quicker. That's it. That's, that's just super simple. So high glue, this is granulated high glue. This is from LMI. This is 192 gram strength. Gram strength is typically associated with strength, but it's not actually that correct. Uh, so the higher the gram strength, the higher the number in the gram strength. So there's 192, which is what this is. There's 251 and uh, 315, and 315 being the strongest, but it's not true. The gram strength indicates how brittle it dries, how much water you have to add to it to get it to a viscosity that you can work with, and how quickly you've got to clamp up. So the higher the gram strength, the more brittle it will dry, and the, more, the less open time you have to clamp it. And in regard to strength, there's a 192 is the typical gram strength for Luthery. Sometimes they go a little bit higher, but not really. 192 is uh, the, the the key one. It's a it's a beautiful combination of strength and clamping time and brittleness or not brittleness. So it's not super brittle, but it's brittle enough for Luthery. With all the gram strengths, they are stronger than the wood that they are glued to. So there is just zero point in going any higher than 192 gram strength. Uh, it's just, if, if something's gonna fail, it will be the wood before the glue because the glue's stronger. However, if you go up in brittleness, the glue will crack or shatter quicker than the wood will crack. What happens when you use a higher gram strength, you have to add more water to the, to the granules and then you have less open time, you have less time to clamp it. So in the mixture, there's actually less glue because you have to add more water to it to hydrate the glue and you've got less time to clamp it. So it's just a, there's, there's no benefit to using it and it's more brittle. There's a point where more brittle becomes a liability because uh, if, you, if something's super brittle, you knock it like that and it cracks or shatters and then the seam separates. So the, the payoff for using something like 315 is just not there. And they're all stronger than the wood anyway. So uh, 192 is all you need. So the things you do need to buy are granules, some water, a glue pot, which heats it up to 140 Fahrenheit. The glue pots, uh, there's it's a variety, but this one is a specially made one for for this. It's called a hold heat automatic, and it's got the the heater, then a copper um, heat pot, and then you put water in there, let it heat up, and then you put the granules in this, and it uh, liquefies. So it's just something I don't have to worry about or check. I don't need a thermometer in there. It just stays at 140 degrees, which is 60 centigrade. So if you're working with hot high glue all the time, invest in a good glue pot, because if, if the glue gets above 140 degrees, it breaks down the protein and then it's not, doesn't work as glue anymore, as good. You can use a scale or something, but you don't need to, and I'll show you why. So I just use a little glass jar. This is the French jam thing. I can never remember what it's called, but it's the French jam. <laughs> it's just a, a small glass jar. All right, the next part is mixing it up. It's super easy. It's two to one or 
the LMI bucket here says 1.8 to 1. The other thing that is important, which I just found out this year, is you mix cold water with granules and let the granules hydrate and then put that into the, uh, the hot water bath. And then once the the granules have liquefied and become, you know, workable glue, then you can add more water to it, more hot water to the, uh, to the hot mixture or the hot glue. So it's cold with cold, cold water with the cold granules and hot water to the already liquefied hot glue. But what's more important than knowing, you know, the two to one ratio, which is simple enough to remember, um, when you have that mixture in a glue pot and it's just sitting there all day, the water evaporates and your perfect two to one ratio mixture won't be that any longer. So the most important thing about hide glue is understanding what the perfect viscosity is. And the viscosity is one that you kind of need to see on video, I think, just to understand what what you should be looking for and aiming for. Uh, I've, I've tried to read about viscosity and it comes across a little bit, but it's easier just to show a quick clip of the right viscosity so you know how it should drip off the brush. So that is far more important to know than how you mix it up at the very beginning. So how you do mix it up at the beginning, <laughs> I use one of these little cups. I get about three quarters of a cup. Now for the water. What I used to do is mix up this with hot water. I just poured hot water in and then uh, it gelled up and I just put it straight in here. What I have learned since then is that it is far better to add cold water to the granules and then let it hydrate. And then once that's hydrated, put it into the, the hot water bath. So I put, you know, about three quarters of a cup of glue and I'm gonna do pretty much a full cup of water and then pour it into the eye glue. And then that's just gonna hydrate up, give it a stir to help it along. When you add 1.8 parts water to one part high glue granules, it looks like you've added too much water, but what the dry granules are doing is just absorbing the water and they're puffing up, kind of like oatmeal or something. So don't think that you've done something wrong. And if you have added three parts water to one part glue, you can just wait for it to hydrate up. And then once it's finished that, you can just pour out the excess water. So this has only been sitting here for about 10 minutes and it's already soaked up all the water. The consistency is, it's like soft granules. They're, they're not, uh, they're individual granules still, but they're kind of soggy. With that consistency, I'm just gonna lightly put the lid on. I won't tighten it up. There's enough water in here to kind of cover the, uh, or surround the glue up to about here. So when you put that in, just double check that the water is high enough. I might add just a touch more water. Lid on, just gonna leave it for half an hour, at least for the glue to reach 140 and become a liquid. This is the consistency that I like to use. It's a consistency that is <laughs> between runny and not runny. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. So the consistency I like to see when you lift up the brush, it's, it starts off a constant stream and then it gets, uh, after a couple of seconds, it just becomes a bit more drippy. I don't really know how else to describe it. The best way to do it is just to look at it and so you can see what I'm talking about. Now, there would be some instances where I would want maybe a th slightly thicker consistency and the the working time and the strength of the glue isn't particularly affected by you know if you go outside that consistency it's a little bit thinner a little bit thicker this is how i like to work it if it was a little bit thicker than this i'd be happy as well and it will be a little bit thicker than this in an hour of this being on because the water, the 50% water that is in this will evaporate slowly and it will get thicker. Like I mentioned, when it gets to a point where it's kind of just dripping in blobs or really slowly, then you've got to add more water. And how I add more water is just to get the lid and pour some water into the high glue from the lid because that's hot, hot water into hot high glue 
use cold water for cold granules. That's the tip. So another important thing about high glue is the gel time. Um, unlike type bond or epoxy, which you've got five minutes to use or in epoxy's case, you know, 20 minutes, depending on the hardener. The gel time or the, the open time of hot high glue isn't very much. And how you can extend the open time is by heating up whatever you're gluing. If say you're gluing on a bridge, if you heat up the bridge and you heat up the, the thing that you're gluing the bridge to, you get a far longer open time. Um, so I'm just going to demonstrate gelling time on these two bits of maple. You probably have 10 seconds, 15 seconds if you don't heat up something, if it's 75 degree environment. But when you heat up the substrate or whatever you're gluing and whatever you're gluing it to, you get a far longer open time, which is really beneficial. So normally I'll be using a hairdryer, just a typical hairdryer um, for people who have hair. I used to, but this is a paint stripper, but it's it's just going to heat up this a lot quicker than uh, my hairdryer would. So uh, normally use a hairdryer, don't use one of these because you could, if you're trying to heat up a, like a, a bridge area on a top, you could strip the paint on this with this. Um, so yeah, be careful. I'm just going to pick this one aside. So what I'm going to do, I'll use two similar size paint brushes, dip them both in the high glue at the same time and then blob them on here and then just using my fingers, you'll be able to see which one gels up a lot quicker. This is going to get a bit messy. but So similar amount of glue and then I'll just see how long it takes for this to gel up. So that's still workable. So once it starts to gel, uh, it, you can't clamp it anymore. It, it doesn't act or have the strength that it does when it's in liquid form. That's gelled up enough that I would be not very comfortable or confident with gluing a bridge on when it's that consistency. And especially now, see how it's blobbing up. But this one will still be good. That's still, and I can, you know, feel the warmth. I did heat it up quite a bit, but when you're dealing with instruments, it's best to really play it safe and heat up everything as best you can. You just want it warm. It's got to be easy to touch. A trick that people use as well as the hairdryer is to have a heat lamp or incandescent bulb that sits just above the bridge area or something. You, you know, put some cardboard around the bridge area so it doesn't, uh, effect or warm up the surrounding finish too much. So in regard to storage of hide glue, once you've liquefied it and mixed it up and everything, you can keep it in the one jar. And I've done that in the past, keeping it in the fridge. Uh, it seems to keep really well, just watch out for mold and that sort of thing. Another way is to use a ice cube tray. And I first saw this mentioned by Frank Ford. Instead of heating up and, you know, using the entire batch, you just pop out a little segment of hide glue, heat that up in this, and then you're ready to go. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and uh, this took the mystery out of hide glue and that you try it. I didn't go into the benefits of using it. I'm gonna do a video on that uh, later on. But uh, please, if you found this helpful, like and subscribe and leave a comment and uh, that helps the algorithm, as they say, and it, Unfortunately, it really does. Shouldn't, but it really does. And uh, lets YouTube know that you like this stuff. So thank you so much. I'll see you next time. Bye. I live down the road from Buddy's Barroom. I got a running tab that's done run away. Sometimes I think I'm whistling past the graveyard. Last night I got so drunk I didn't need